All right. Good day. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another Live the Fuel show. So it's been a busy day today. I think we're on our fourth show for you guys coming up. And uh, I don't even know. I think two for somebody else's shows. So I can't keep up. We're, we're in the flow zone. We're the flow state, as some people like to say. So this is the last one of the day. And it's going to be a good one because I'm going to give you a little hint. We might be chatting a little about health. We might be chatting a little about healthy lifestyle. But I'm also a geek about food. And we're going to geek about weight loss. We're going to get weight transformation. There's a lot going to happen here. So make sure you tune in. So for the newer listeners, remember, we're here to fuel your health, business, and lifestyle. So we're going to balance this out if you can. Uh, and uh, let me give you a quick skinny on my guest co-host today. So chef, cooking coach, food enthusiast, and he's been in the business for about 24 years. So he might be a little bit passionate about eating healthy. He beat his own battle with morbid obesity, not just obesity. I want to help him have him today clarify the morbid factor because some people don't understand the difference. And he really just wants to set out and make a positive impact on others. So without further ado, again, chef, author, and public speaker, Jacob Bustos. Welcome to the show, sir. Thank you very much, Mr. Scott. Live the fuel. You are the man. Well, and you are too, sir, because you had a bit, bit of a transformation. Have oh, you not? Just just a little one, you know, um, all my friends say I'm half the man I used to be. And I actually take that as a compliment these days. Mm, that is a fun spin on that one, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Literally half the man I used to be. I used to weigh 320 pounds and uh, my lowest weight was 160. And right now I'm hovering right around 170. So just a, just a little bit of a, you know, up a peak in a, in a alley there, but it's all good. Now, I've spent years in the health, fitness, coaching space as well. So just to help people wrap their heads around that, uh, body type, what, what's your height? I am 5'10". Okay. And uh, so, you know, not, not, I'm not 6'4". I, I, I wish I could grow a few inches, but no, 5'10". Five, five, That's me. So. <laughs> so here's the best part. When I graduated high school in 1995, I was only 6'1". Then I shot the 6'4", freshman year of college. And, wow. but I graduated high school at around 170. Now my sweet spot, well, if I'm training for a big endurance bike race, like recently, a few months ago, I dropped down to about 180, 185, but I really wow. am, I have to struggle to stay in that 190, 195 range. So it just gives you an idea. Like you're basically at my high school weight at, and what's your age? Uh, I am 42. Boom. Uh, I, or I, I was going to tell you I'm 75 and I just look really good. <laughs> I'm 42. Well, you do because I have way more salt and pepper than you. And I just turned 42 last week. So, uh, well done, sir. So awesome. So and, we're the uh, same age. That's awesome. Yeah. Right. So we're, we're uh, last week. So I'm a Virgo on the cusp of Libra, whatever that means. So, uh, I, I don't know, there's a keychain out there that probably defines that. <laughs> I'm sure there is. Or a bumper sticker. There you go. Yeah. A bumper sticker still a thing. I guess so. I, I don't know. If, unless you're driving a Tesla and you don't want to mess up your car. No, that's my brother-in-law. That's his company car, <laughs> Tesla. So there's no stickers on it. So Good well, listen, job. let's dive in, man. I mean, okay. You, let's you, do it. You got a bit of a history here. You got, you got a background from a popular chain, Panera Bread, right? Yep, that's so correct. so what, what got you involved with those guys? Well, let me take you one step even further back. Um, I started in the restaurant business when I was uh, 15 years old, um, working at my local McDonald's restaurant. So um, my, oh. my uh, venture into the food world really started as a teenager in fast food. Hmm. Um, and I never thought I would stick with a food business. That really wasn't my, my goal. I, I thought I'd be off, you know, becoming a lawyer someday. Um, but I just enjoyed the business so much that I stayed in the business and I did, um, uh, McDonald's restaurants for probably nine and a half years. Wow. Um, and then now with Panera for about 17 years. So, you know, let's pause on that. So you went from now, some people, depending on how you look at it, like I am, I am Mr. Anti-fast food. Okay. Right. I, the last time I ate in a McDonald's, oh gosh was when I was serving out West, because you're a California guy. I left I the corporate space. So part of my backstory and why I fires my logo is I served as one of the federal hotshots doing wildland firefighting out West. Oh, so wow. I was so you guys are from California, you know all about that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so Unfortunately, we do. Unfortunately. So 2010, 2011 is when I served. And one of the side effects, which is going to go into my book, one of the annoying things of that career choice is as a hotshot, you're shipped all over the West. You're, you're you're the, Everywhere. you're the elite of the elite. They send you in where nobody else wants to go. So you're on the go. And they, we have these crew carrier vehicles that fit 
four, four guys or girls in the back and then uh, uh, two squad bosses in the front. There's two of those. And then there's the superintendent's truck in front of that. So you got a right. convoy. Well, it's about speed and deliverability. So the sooner you get on assignment, the better. So we only ate where we could get fuel for the vehicles and the fuel, they were all diesel. So just picture that. Where are you going to stop federal no, vehicles? Don't do it. Yeah. Diesel fuel. That's food. And they, they, and because we're very militarized, they're like, they hit right. the stopwatch. They're like, all right, guys, you have 15 minutes, grab and go. <laughs> and everybody's like boom, jumping out of the vehicle and like getting food. So that's right. Uh, that was the last time I ate in a McDonald's. So, you know, here, here's the thing, uh, Scott, I, I love, I, I actually love my story and I love to tell people that I, I worked for McDonald's because, um, you know, people knock them all the time and, and, and they're the biggest, right? They're the biggest, they're the best because, because they can be. Um, but you know, um, I guess I would just tell you, I, I don't knock them because I think we all have choices to make. And unfortunately people make the wrong choices as I did. Um, so here, here's my little ode to them. I won't knock them because it's a good company and, uh, they, oh, they I, I promote well. McDonald's from a business oh, standpoint. They're geniuses because <laughs> people don't realize that if you actually study business, so it's like, right. people don't realize that the reason why McDonald's is successful is not because of the food. It's because of their knowledge around real estate and entre right. entrepreneurship and helping entrepreneurial minded people grow a successful business because they have right. a turnkey solution. I mean, nowadays, that we have to spend like a million to get into one of those. Oh, it's pretty expensive. It's like 1.2. Yeah. yeah. So Panera Bread, for example, we're not to fast forward the story, but that's probably a little more approachable, but they're getting just as successful. And I agree. Yeah. McDonald's, Burger King, any of those guys. Sometimes if you're in a food desert or you're in the middle of nowhere, literally the desert, um, right. and that's the only option, you do what you could do. Right? That's, that's right. Bad. So, I mean, luckily I was in a career where we were hiking 16 hours a day and you were I was burning hiking, off all those calories. It, I mean, now granted, the inflammatory side effects of, of some of that food, not good. Um, right. Like I had, my knees used to hurt back then and I was 31. I'm like, I don't have any of that anymore. So, cause I don't eat bread or anything anymore. But right. so the point is this, you know what, to your point, you start, you dropped a couple key words. That's why I want to pause on here, making smart decisions, making sure. the right choices, even sure. in fast food, you could do your best. Absolutely. Right? Okay. Absolutely. So, yeah, go ahead. I, you know, I, I would say a, a couple things about that. Um, you know, we, everybody, and, and I'm from the world of, of Los Angeles, right? I'm, I'm from the world of celebrities and, and beautiful people mm -hmm. and, um, you know, not, not to brag, but I, I know a few of them and, and here's the thing, every single one of them, I don't care how gorgeous they are. I don't care how good they look. Everyone that I have come in contact with has some sort of body image issue. So, you know, you, you hear of everybody binge dieting and you hear of everybody going on this new fad diet and, and the truth and the reality is is that we, ju we can eat whatever we want to eat you just have to eat small portions of it mm -hmm. um, because I think if we are deprived of something we tend to want it more so you know for me and even in my weight loss journey um, you know do I feel like eating uh, you know a, a piece of chocolate every once in a while yeah I do I mean I, it's, sure. it's kind of normal but I just now learned how to use, you know, kind of like your, your, your program is, you know, live the fuel. I learned how to live the fuel instead of making it, you know, gorge mm -hmm. uh, on, on, on the fuel. It's, it's just live, live to eat. Well, and let's pause on that. Fuel is, is, is a very key word in my brand and it, it means so many different things. So I love that you're using it. I want to fuel people's health in a healthy way. I want them to fuel their businesses in the right way to build sustainable businesses. I want them to fuel right. lifestyle balance uh, and effectiveness so they can have a better life. And sure. the one thing I want to pause on in that is there's two things over three years of podcasting now that have popped up that are not stated in the brand, but just keeps happening over and over again. And I know you're going to appreciate this. One is your mindset. And two, back to your psychology, and two <laughs> is this statement that I started using about a year ago is we're all just at a different place on the timeline. Mm -hmm. So there's patience, there's knowledge, but then there's you know, taking the knowledge and learning to train with it and execute on it properly. These things take time and you need to have a right mindset to keep you going. So I just want to throw those at you and see what you think about that because you got one hell of a transformation journey. So yeah, um, you know, I'm I'm gonna kind of throw this up on the screen. I, I'm gonna try not to block myself, but I, I did write my book. There um, it is, and it came out, you know, very recently on the 27th. Uh, actually, on the 20, I'll get you the date. Well, here uh, I'll, when, I'll let you put your hand down because I'll do some <laughs> screen sharing. Boom. When when food is your frenemy, 
Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, there's my website. So uh, jacobbustos.com or portionyourplate.com. Yep. Um, and one of the cool things about this is in, um, in chapter four, uh, chapter four is all about mindset. In fact, that's the title of, of the chapter, Mindset Matters. I love it. It's, it's kind of cool that you talk about the mindset because, you know, the, the mind, we've heard it a million times, right? The mind is a powerful thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and really at the point of, you know, for me at the point of no return was my mind was just in a place where I needed to make a change. And, I, you know, there's a couple of very significant things that happened to me. Um, one of them was, uh, I'm in the business world, right? I'm in the food world. I've been in it for 26 years. Um, one of our investors for, for uh, our Panera franchise, mm-hmm. uh, we don't have investors anymore, but we had one at one point. Uh, he and his wife came in to uh, visit one of the restaurants. And me being a hospitable guy, I said, hey, let's have breakfast. And so he kind of declined. Uh, 15 minutes later, uh, I go back and I'm, I'm, I'm you know, can I, can I please get you some breakfast? And, and I was met with a, a horrible response and that was no I don't want to look like you someday ouch Um, yeah no kidding talk about an uh, that's aggressive talk about about an ouch Um, and then the second really uh, a moment for me was I walked up to one of the restaurants that I was running uh, and I I saw the reflection in the glass door of what I had allowed myself to become Mm -hmm. and so when you talk about mindset Scott it is it is so powerful what our mind can do because I never thought of myself as as this big guy, I never, you know, of course I I knew what I looked like, but when, when my mind really, when, when I allowed my mind to set in as to, to really think about what I had allowed myself to do, Mm -hmm. um, you know, how other people viewed me and, and how I kind of started viewing myself. Um, I really had to put my mind in a whole different place to really accept the transformation that was about to take place. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I tell people all the time that I love that where you're hitting on this because, what you're saying, at least for me, this is my translation of how my brain is dialed in because I've been doing the mindset game for a while. Right. It's, you were at a state of morbid obesity. I was. I've had, I've had psycho- psychiatrists, psychologists on this show. I've had sports psychologists. I've had uh, depression experts. Mm-hmm. I've had weight loss. Uh, recently, a woman who had her own weight loss transformation and she said, listen, outside of morbid obesity, overeating the addiction, there is two different forms of addiction. There's just, right. you know, you could just be an addictive personality and it just so happened that food was the unfortunate side effect. And it's usually, and here's the fuel for the fire in a negative way is, and I don't know if you, I'm, I'm intrigued to see if you geek out on the book because I'm a ketogenic athlete. I've had right. a lot of health and fitness nuts on here. My client, Vinny, fortunately, I'm going to try and get you connected with him. Uh, he owns the trademark NSNG, no sugar, no grains. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's, he's surviving cancer because of that lifestyle over nine years now. So, wow. wow. I mean, there's a lot of proof to the pudding here. And sure. we just released a documentary film, Fat a Documentary, about the truth behind healthy fats. Sure. And one of the biggest things that, if you have that addictive personality or you're in that on the, on the negative swing, right? We have to get you back up to the positive. That's Correct. what I hear what you say. I can't overeat. Well, I could try to, I could try to overeat. If I covered like two steaks with avocado and all kinds of rich, healthy fats, right. it's going to be really hard for me to overeat on that because sure. they're so satiating and so nutrient rich. If I sat down with a pizza, I can get it on. Different right? story. Oh right? yeah, a lot of sugar going on, a lot of grains. A lot your, of best way, your leptin and ghrelin hormonal levels are like your brain's like, oh my god, I love this stuff. Yeah, just keep going, bro. And I'm not right. feeling satiated. So, did any of that happen in your journey? You know, it, it it kind of did, but here here's the thing, right? I and I'm not shy about this at all. I tell everybody that I I lost weight through uh through gastric bypass. Okay. And, okay. And I'm not shy about that. And here's, you know, at the very beginning of my journey, Scott, I I. I kind of was ashamed of that and I didn't tell a whole lot of people how I had lost weight because mm-hmm. there's a little bit of a stigma that comes with that, which is, oh, you took the easy way out. That's not the easy and, way. And it, Anytime and you not, cut into your body is not the easy way. Yeah, it's not the easy way out. My stomach is now the size of an egg and if I eat too much, I you know, have to, to go to the bathroom and throw up because mm-hmm. it you know, doesn't feel so good. Or I end up you know, sitting in the fetal position for 30 minutes until my stomach ache goes away. Well, yeah, because so you, you change the way your body was designed. Yeah, the, the mechanics are just different, right? It's not the easy way out. But, but, but here's the thing. What it did teach me was how to eat the right way. And, and you know, we see, we see TV and, and we all watch Sally Struthers who goes out on, 
national television and shows the poor starving children of Africa. Mm-hmm. And, and the reality is, is that, yeah, I mean, they, they probably have a lot less than what we do, but they're not, they're, they're actually probably more the ideal weight than what, you know, we are in, in, in the United States. And something that you touched on was, you know, morbid obesity. And there are 20 million children in this country, in the United States of America today, and that's of the children that can be counted that are currently dealing with uh, diabetes. Yeah. They're, um, actually, there's children literally now because of what yeah. we have allowed to happen over all these decades right. being born already in a diabetic condition. That's right. And so when, when you talk about the different types of food, like, like a steak with avocado, right? It's, it's a choice that you make because your body's going to burn that off differently than if you sit down and eat a pizza. And so for me, it was just learning how to eat like I should have been eating all along. Mm-hmm. Right. And so, you know, when, when you see Sally Struthers talking about the poor children of Africa, we should be talking about poor, poor Sally Struthers. Let's help her and let's not help the kids. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and I don't, I don't say that to be mean cause I, I love her, but the, the reality is, is that, um, you know, morbid obesity, it's, it's an epidemic in this country that, that I want to be the biggest voice in this country to talk about why weight matters. And, you know, food is, it's just like a drug, right? It's, it is, it is addictive. If, if you see pizza, who the heck doesn't like pizza? Who the heck doesn't like to, to eat lasagna? We all, we all do. We all, oh my God, to- you would love it. My wife uh, makes yeah. fun of me because I won't eat pizza anymore. Now, that's right. just my choice. I was like, dude, because I'm mm-hmm. an athlete. Right. And so, some people might look at me like, you got to live a little. And I was like, actually, I'm living great because of my choices. <laughs> I was like, I'm 42 right. and out doing hundred plus mile bike rides. Like right. I can do it in my sleep. Like I'm actually healthier, more fit today than I was 15 years ago. So, right. I mean, at one time I actually, and this is, I mean, this is not to downplay you. It's like, I only, I was only at the, I think the highest I ever got to was 205. Right. But I was a bouncer at a bar. I was working, you know, your circadian sleep cycles are messed up. You're working until two o'clock in the morning. At the end of your shift, you're kicking back some Guinnesses uh, or right. maybe some car bombs. And, and then you're eating hot wings at two o'clock in the morning. Not the healthiest lifestyle. I was not doing of the athletics not. that I do today, right? Of course not. So again, back to your point here is this lifestyle choices, right? Right. And that's exactly why when I, when I decided to write a book, which, you know, and, and trust me on this one, I mean, there's more to my story besides the, the food and the weight, but um, I never in my life even dreamt about writing a book. I never even thought I would. Um, and when I came up with the title, um, F- when food is your frenemy, you know, I do food, like that, by the way. <laughs> food has been my best friend at some of my lowest times in my life. And it's mm-hmm. been my, my greatest enemy. And so um, there, there's a point where we can all make food our, our, a friend again. Um, but again, if you choose the pizza, it's, there's your enemy. It's, it's coming right at you. And it's just like a drug. You, we have food so readily available. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's more addictive than cocaine. And it's more addictive than, than you know, other things. Sugar, by the way. Is our biggest uh, downfall. You know, it is because people say, well, you can't eat, you can't eat f- bacon. It's, it's fattening. Well, yeah, of course, bacon's fattening. But fat doesn't make you fat. Sugar makes you fat. Thank you. That's it. It's in our movie. <laughs> it is. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sugar makes you fat. And so... Um, Everything in this country has, has sugar. And, and just to kind of throw another, I, I get a little w- wordy here, but I, I was just in Africa. I just spent two weeks in Africa. Um, wow. Just got back uh, last week. Um, and I actually cooked for some of the kids that I went, I went to go serve at an orphanage. Oh, that's awesome. And I cooked some Americanized food for them. Um, and the first thing they said was, wow, it's very sweet. It's See? very sweet. Because and their I palates aren't used to it. Yeah, none, none at all. I added no no sugar to any of the food that I cooked and they thought it was very sweet. Well, look at the history, right? And that's one thing, if you haven't seen that movie yet, man, I'm telling you, not just because I worked on the project, it's just, right. he went back 150 years of history to wow. help people understand how veganism started from a, 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 a religious movement, not to rap, he's not ripping on it because he's got clients that are vegans. He's try, he respects right. people's lifestyle choices, but he wants people to understand why it's all happening, right? Um, like, uh, so I'm glad you brought that up. I mean, for example, in, in all your studies, when you're getting ready for the book and going to Africa and stuff like that, have you ever right. stumbled across Dr. Sylvia Tara? She's the author of the book, uh, The Secret Life of Fat. Oh, yes, yes. I had her on my show like two and a half years ago when she was right. launching the book. Blew my mind. Like, I already knew that, you know, sugar triggers 
weight gain because it, your body gets inflammatory responses. Right. And then you're not to get all scientific, but your body can only filter out so much <laughs> bad stuff. And your right. fat cells are so intelligent. They're like, hey, all this extra crap is in your bloodstream because of your unhealthy choices. And I can't keep up. My, the, I can't filter it all out. So, right. hey, fat cells save the day. I'm going to pull that stuff out and store that until you can find a way to get rid of it. I mean, that's a very fast forwarded translation. <laughs> well, you know, even, even the science behind eating breakfast. I mean, I, one of the things I had to really, really force myself to do is, you know, the first thing I do, I, I, I even put a refrigerator in my bedroom and it's stocked with my protein drinks, which only have one gram of sugar and, you know, 30 grams of protein. But, but why in the bedroom? Th I'm intrigued. Honestly, because you, we really should be eating breakfast within 30 minutes of waking up. If we don't do that, our body kind of starts to shut down and our metabolism starts to slow down. And so for me, for me, that was the easiest place to first thing in the morning, grab a, a protein drink and start my day off the right way. Um, and, and I'll tell you something, Scott, it, it's not easy, right? I still deal with all the struggles that I did when I was morbidly obese. I still, even though I'm very thin now, I mean, sometimes people say you look too skinny. Um, so you can never keep anybody happy, right? But you know, the, one of the things that I still struggle with is there, there are times that I like, you know, my, my cream and my coffee and I still drink, you know, my, my coffee every morning, but, um, but my lifestyle has completely changed. And so do I sit down and eat a giant meal? Like I used to No, I don't. Um, well, you, do physically, I drink, you physically can't, right? Physically because of can't, surgery. Yeah. yeah. Do I, do I sit and drink, you know, Dr. Pepper, like I, like it was going out of style? No, I don't do that anymore. So you know, all in all, I guess I would just say that the, the lifestyle change had to happen and it really started with the way I was thinking. Well, especially the sodas, man, the corn syrups in that. Oh, it's so, so inflammatory. Bad. I mean, so it, you got sugar and then you got overly processed, you know, lab created corn syrups. It's like, right. I tell people all the time, like, okay, if, I hate to say it, but if you went to Mexico and drank south of the border soda, it's still sugar but it might be actually a hair healthier for you because it's actually pure sugar cane it's sugar and not sugar that stuff. I mean, yep. you're still going to set off, you're still going to set off your leptin and ghrelin imbalances and your hormonal issues, but correct. I'm like, dear God, the stuff that's in that, I mean, you know, here, this will make you happy. You know, what <laughs> really angered me this year. Cause you're a cook and you get this, right? What's a popular pickle brand? Oh, uh, 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 Vlasic. Okay. What's the other popular one right next to Vlasic? <laughs> Clausen. Clausen. Now, I don't know if Vlasic does this, right. but I've been eating Clausen's for years. I grew up on right. a farm. I knew I, my, my mom made us pickles. She would do the old mason jar. You, you put right. them in a pot, you can them. I, we, I had a quarter acre garden. I would, I, it was part of my chores as a kid. Sure. So we grew the cucumbers and she showed me how you pickle them with the fresh dill. And, and we would have ba a basement just full of canned vegetables to, for the winter. Right. So healthy. Never put any sugar in that, number one. Number two... I, I spin the Clausen jar around. Now, this is four months ago. I don't eat them anymore right. because there's corn syrup in it. Corn syrup. Yep. Why? Why? Come on, chef. Help me understand. <laughs> it, 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 it's, it's the industry's way of getting you to want more. And, and it's, I know it's terrible. I mean, and that's why, look, I'm not here to promote Panera. I, I love the brand. It's where it's, oh it's man, if I'm traveling, dude, more. Panera's got some great options. But, but let yeah. me tell you, we are, our menu is a hundred percent clean, literally like there, none of our food has any preservatives. None of it has any additives, uh, added sugars. And so, you know, for me, it is so important to eat real food that doesn't have a bunch of junk added to it. There's no reason. I mean, when you stop and you really taste a, a really good piece of fruit or a really good vegetable that has nothing added to it. Like food is awesome. Yeah. I mean, we have, and, and trust me, we, we live in the richest country on earth. We have access to everything. And, and, you know, coming back from Africa where there is no access, there is no Costco on the corner where you could just go and, and pick everything off the shelf that you want. Yeah. But when you start to look at America and our diets, we have added sugar to everything. And it's for no it's, other reason than to get people to go back and get more. And that, thank you. There's two outlet, actually, and maybe you can correct me on this. There's, there's a second variable. A lot of them justify it for preserve, preservation, right? right. You're preserving the product for shelf life. But this right. goes back to your point. Well, because we are in North America, not even just USA, I mean, Canada too, um, even parts of Mexico now. I mean, let's go with North America. Let, thanks to modern science and the power of logistics, um, right. trucking and shipping and everything else. Now, granted, 
it, you, your nutrient value does drop at, at you know the longer something's being shipped and moved. But the point here is that, to your point, one thing I do appreciate about Panera Bread is like most of the food's all whole food source, and you guys are making everything in house. Like I love it. Absolutely. Um, you're not manufacturing stuff. And, mm -hmm. but yeah, the second variable of sugar, they justified it was, was that preservation. Right. It's like, well, or just eat fresh. That's correct. I don't know. Sounds crazy. <laughs> well, we've, we've kind of, we've kind of messed up the, you know, the ecosystem, the way, the, the way things are supposed to work. I mean, we're not, you know, we're not supposed to have everything available to us at all times, at, at, at all times of, of the year. I mean, there's, there's things that we should be eating, you know, in the summertime or in the wintertime. So We've kind of just the humanness in, in, in people has kind of messed that up. But yeah, that, that's, that's actually a very good point. Show. Yeah, I mean, that is, that, that's a good <laughs> point. We, you know, to be fair, if you want to tie this to paleo or whatever, right. there's so many buzzwords now because uh, I'm a marketer, so I get it. You know, let's, right. let's add some buzz on it. But to be fair, if you want to study the Paleolithic era, yes, right. you ate things in season. Correct. So even, even you know, if, if you study genetics and you study the history of that bone of that, you know, Paleolithic person earthed and you got a lab. Yeah, you could find traces of blueberries and stuff like that if that was, if was exist back then because it was a seasonal item. That's right. They didn't have freezers. They didn't have canning practices. Um, if they needed to eat and they were hunting and they didn't have any meat to eat, they went and picked a berry, you know, yeah, found a vegetable, right. ate a root, a root, you know. Uh, that's right. By the way, I love your, oh, what is your seasonal soup? Is it butternut squash or? Butternut squash. Yeah, man, that's on point. On point. <laughs> it's, it's, one of, it's one of my favorites. I love it. Only because I, I just don't feel like making it. <laughs> and I, I don't eat a lot of soup, but it's like, you know what? Because I make my own chili in-house. I have my own bone broth and everything I make. I mean, I'm, I'm a geek. Not man, I'm going to have to go to your house. Dude, oh my God. People are like, why do you put bone broth in everything? I'm like, because back in the day, study history, how was broth made? It, they didn't call bone. it bone broth because that was broth. That's right. <laughs> like it's get not all the good science. collagen out of there and you, you got, you got gold. Oh yeah. Yeah. So I, I now I went back to the old school. You'll appreciate this being a chef. I, uh, a buddy of mine, like three years ago, right. Went to his house and he had all of this beef. I'm like, Whoa, what's all this beef? He's like, Oh, I, 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 I buy in on a cow. I'm like, yeah, I was like, I grew up that way because my dad, it was an like organic cattle broker. Well, now he's an organic cattle huh. broker. Back in the day, organic wasn't a thing. But right. <laughs> and we used to, you know, had two huge chest freezers in our garage on the farm and we would stock it up for the winter. We would, I, I would sell eggs on the side of the road and we would butcher the chickens for when, when they stopped laying because they don't wow. lay anymore. And we had Sounds pork, like Africa. Meat, right? It's like, yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> yeah. So, so now past three years, I went in, on, uh, I contacted the same ranch here in Pennsylvania and I buy in and I have a quarter of a cow delivered every year. And I, I it's like, Hey, make sure you don't throw the bones away. Give me right. the bones. Like, really? Right. I was like, yeah, I make my own bone broth. And like, Oh sure. Here, here's the bones. So, uh, I'm not a chef, but I know how to make bone broth. Nice. So. And you get them for free. I bet. They don't even charge me more for it. Exactly. They're charging you for the steaks and the ground beef and everything else. And then all of a sudden I just get this extra box of bones and I get, <laughs> I get a big smile on my face. My friend's like, well, did you pay more for that? I'm like, nope. Nope. That's, <laughs> that's the free stuff. So I mean, awesome. I, I would, I mean, it's easier. Not everybody can, not, let's be real. Not everybody can have a chest freezer and, and store all that stuff. Right. Uh, there's, there's actually some great companies now doing the whole drop ship stuff. You pay a little premium for that, sure. but you know, Hey, that's another way to source things. Um, and you can't always get things that are, have that, uh, marketing, what's well, it's literally a marketing term. People don't get me There's a whole different podcast that, you know, you, you and I could probably geek out about the organic for sure. All natural. Um, <laughs> that is a whole other podcast actually. Uh, but let, let's, so, so part of your other hacks, right? Right. This frenemy piece is the frenemy when you decided on that, is that primarily based around the psychology impacts, the mindset impacts? And that's what I was hearing from you. I just want to get that clarified. Yeah, it, it really, it really, really came down to, um, you know, my story. And that's just food. You know, I loved food. I loved food so much that it was my friend. And, and, and you know, again, I would just tell you, there's a lot of life things that happen to me besides, besides just having gastric bypass that. that there's always maybe, a backstory. <laughs> there's, there, yeah, there's a lot of backstory for sure. But, but you know what? Um, yeah, that, that's really where it was born. It was, you know, I thought about food and I thought about the impact of my life and, and just thinking, gosh, how much has it been my friend and how much has it been my enemy? Um, and, and, and how did I get where I was at? And mm -hmm. so that's really where it was born from. It wasn't born from anywhere else. I didn't, I, I wish I had like this cool story about how I came up with the, the, the word frenemy. 
um, for a book. And, and then I was like, wow, I wonder if, I wonder if that's been used for a book anywhere else. And luckily, lucky for me, it hadn't been. So that, no, that I think was, that's smart because yeah, I mean, people hashtag it and use it. So from a marketing standpoint, you just stumbled upon like gold right there. So yeah, that's right. Uh, so now obviously the other part of your brand though, I can't help it because I'm a marketer is, is portion right. your plate. So yes. obviously, is that a big chunk of the book where you really dive into, obviously, post-surgery, you really right. ha you've really had to focus on the volume on the plate because you can only ingest so much. Right. Yeah, that's, that's exactly where that was born from. It, it was, um, you know, when I, when I got home from the hospital after having gastric bypass, I, I literally started looking at what I could eat versus what I used to eat. And I would put a plate next to another plate and I would put what my old portion used to look like and my new portion I thought wow portion your plate that's that's kind of what I'm doing I'm just portioning my plate um, but I've got some great friends like at Live Liga which is another company that makes um, like China for uh, portion control um, oh is that like plate size yeah plate yeah. size and, and there's, cup there's, size there's actually marketing proof to that that restaurants yes. who use larger plates they make you think you have to have you have to fill the plate that's right. Like, well, no. I mean, you can still make a big plate, but then have it taper into a, a tiny bowl in the center or something, you know? <laughs> That's right. That's right. So, you know, really portion your plate was, was kind of born out of that. And that was that, you know, I, I, did, a, I did a morning show, which was, uh, I think it was Fox LA. Um, I, I've done quite a few. So I think it was Fox LA. But one of the things that I did was, and this was right around the time that I was picking my, my book title. But um, one of the things I did was I took in uh, takeout from one of the local restaurants here in LA. Okay. And, um, they just couldn't believe when I started unpacking it and putting it on plates, it was overflowing. I mean, you couldn't even fit it on a regular, you know, 10 inch plate. And so when, when I started thinking about portion your plate and, you know, diff just different business things that I could do with that. Um, you know, and, and again, I will tell you, I did not start out this journey with any thought of any of this stuff. I mean, I, I went in to have gastric bypass seven years ago mm. and that was it. I was just going to go and and, and get a tool so that I could lose the weight that I needed to lose. Um, so I, I had, it sounds no like you were just, you business. just needed a win. I mean, you needed some kind right. of win to get you going and right. get over that hurdle is what I'm hearing. That, that's right. And so I had no plans of a book. I had no plans of starting a business. I had no plans of any of that stuff. And, and really just the way my life's journey took me, it kind of all started going in that direction anyway. Um, because I didn't just have gastric bypass, Scott, I had, um, you know, skin removal surgery, which was three years ago. Um, oh, usually a next step if you, I mean, you, you'd lost over 160 yeah. pounds. I mean, yeah, I lost 160 pounds. So I had all this excess skin hanging off my, my midsection. It obviously, you know, doesn't look good. doesn't feel good. Um, you know, and unfortunately the human race, we just, we always, we're never happy. We're never satisfied with something about ourselves. And I don't care. Like I said before, I've met some of the top A-listers in Hollywood and they're not happy. And, and, and it's, it, it stinks to even think about it like that because, you know, you're looking at these people, you, you would think, are perfect and, and they're not happy about something in their body. And so, you know, I chose to go have uh, skin removal surgery and I, I did that. Wasn't a good experience. There's a whole lot to that as well. Mm. Um, but you know, there's every step of the journey has just been something else and something else and something else uh, to the point where I'm at now where I'm, I'm, I'm pretty happy. I mean, I'm, I, I love myself and I'm, I'm, Oh, you started pretty, the show off in a very high note. I loved it. So you're, yeah. you're, I tell you all the time, like, People underestimate the power of yeah. the energy you give off. Right. So and I, I tell people in the beginning, sometimes you don't even realize it. So just do it for somebody else. And then That's all right. of a sudden you realize it's actually benefiting you too. That's right. That's right. right. Sometimes we need each other to fuel the fire. Right. So, hey, can you give me a little fuel? And then I'm like, that's why I, I people come on my show and like, man, you're really high energy. I said, yeah, because I want to make sure you can match me. <laughs> That's right. And then we have just so much a better conversation and a better show for the listeners because That's right. I mean, we all have bad days. Come on. <laughs> and, and we all have a story. I mean, I'll tell you something funny. Um, you know, I, I really, uh, when I started losing all my weight, I wanted to run and, and to me, I was like, I've never been able to run a mile. So I, that's my goal. I want to run a mile. Hmm. But I ended up enrolling or signing up and doing the, uh, half marathon at the LA marathon a couple of years ago. Yeah. Um, and it was like, it was, it was tough. I mean, I felt like my, my hips were going to fall off. Um, but just being able to accomplish that to me was like, have I done it again? No. Do I plan on doing another one? Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. It's not my passion. I don't love to run, but I was you. able to, I was able to achieve that. You know, it was just a milestone for me that, that was awesome. And 
you oh, know, congrats. I, I rock I congrats. Yeah. I, I send congratulations to people when they run a 5k. I, I mean, yeah. I'm with you. It's like, it's called, it's, it's all about setting goals. And once you set the goal, you get the psychological high, you get the win. And then unfortunately it's very easy to drop off of that. So that's why I tell people like, you don't have to live an adrenaline junkie lifestyle like me, right. but keep setting goals. Like, yeah. And, and, you know, we, really my positivity comes from, you know, um, I've always been in the business world, the restaurant world, and it could be a tough, a tough business. It could be a potty mouth business where people are cussing at each other because they got to get things going. Um, you know, and, and during my skin removal surgery, I don't know if you read this in my book, but, uh, I, I was supposed to be released from the hospital at 12 noon. Uh, I still wasn't at 5 PM because I couldn't, they couldn't really wake me up very well. Mm. Um, that night I ended up getting taken back in and basically I died. Um, and so after that experience, I did not I, finish that chapter. So I, <laughs> yeah, no, 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 it's, I, it's all good. I guess so many books and so many authors, I, I try and get a <laughs> good heavy screen through, right. even if I can't read the whole thing, right. uh, cause we do have it. So, uh, but I did not get that part. So, wow. Yeah, and, and honestly, I mean, going through that experience, um, my, my outlook on life is completely different with the weight loss or without the weight loss. My, my whole outlook on life is, um, you know, it's just different. Like we, we have one life to live. We have, and I'm not promoting the, the soap opera here, uh, but we have one life to live and, and we can either leave it behind treating people with, with integrity and being fun and positive, or we can leave it, you know, just having people have a sour taste in their mouth about, you know, interacting with us. And so I choose to be positive. I choose to, to live a great life. I choose to have fun. I choose to love the people that are around me. And so, yeah, that's kind of, that's kind of that in a nutshell. I, I love the mindset you're digging into right now because I kind of hinted at, Hey, we all have good days, bad days. Let's be real. Right. I mean, there's highs and lows. It's all the time, but we do have a choice on how we react, how we take all that information in, how we either ignore it or move on we do. And, or just in general deal with it. Sometimes right. it's just a simple deep breath and just pause for a second and take it all in and let it all out. Right. But I mean, what I think is powerful we just heard is that it shouldn't take us to the point of dying. Correct. To get the wake up call. Correct. Correct. Right? Yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, life happens. Right. And, and for whatever reason, I, my journey, I had to be taken in that journey somehow. And, and, and you know, I, my faith will dictate some of that, but um, you know, we, we all have a journey that we got to be on and we can either make the best of it or we can be miserable about it and, and, and make it bad. And gosh, I just hope people choose to, to make their journey good. Uh, Cause we have one life to live. I love that note. And so obviously, and we're not at the end of the show yet, but I, I love where you're going with this and I want to stay on this hot note. I usually at the end of the show, ask people to kind of leave behind some final words, all encompassing right. messages, et cetera. But before we get there, you just dropped a very simple hint and a mindset piece that I've, I, I had the awakening on over the past you know, two, three years, well, over three years now running the podcast is that, you know, and this goes to business, anything. Sooner or later, we get a wake up call and it's like, man, what is the message? What is the legacy that I'm going to leave behind? Right. So I'm mean, just intrigued, you know, obviously, because you're already in that wavelength. I just want to dig right. deeper into that with you. Yeah, I, honestly, um, you know, the, 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 the reality is, is that our people who are around us, are they going to be better because they were in contact with us or are we going to leave them worse off? If, if we are around people and we leave them worse because they contacted us, then we have no business going around those people. And, and for me, um, you know, I kind of, I, I think about it a lot. And I think about that business guy who made that comment to me that he didn't want to look like me someday. And you know what, Scott, that stung, that really stung. Oh hell yeah, that stung. Um, <laughs> had I not heard that, would I have made the choice to, to, to lose my weight? I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. Hmm. but you know, I think about that and I think, gosh, was that a blessing or a curse? And, and some days I think, well, that was a blessing because it got me to where I needed to go. And then other days I think, well, what a curse, because would I want to be around that guy ever again? Not really. It's, it's not somebody I'd, I'd really want to be around. No, but I like what I'm hearing here because sometimes, again, we talked, I was just saying how we're going to have good days and bad days, right? Right. Right. But if you could turn the negative into a positive. Sure. That's the right mindset. And yeah, that's stung. That's 
first of all, it's rude as hell. But, <laughs> and also that guy doesn't understand what breakfast is. Sorry, I mean, I'm an eggs and bacon guy every day. So right. uh, the point here though, is that that even wasn't the full trigger. It was that then that awakening and seeing yourself in the glass on the front right. of the store. So it's a trigger plus a trigger. And then it was like, boom, you know, epiphany, it sets in. So That's granted, right. is that the kind of person you want to surround yourself with? Famous quote, you know, Jim Rohn, uh, you're the product or the sum of the five people we spend the most time with, whatever the exact word verbiage is. I use it all the time on the show. It's a classic. I truly do believe, support, and coach that to other people. I also do public speaking like you do. I'm a huge motivation guy. God, you are people hearing this right now. Like, Jacob's dropping it. Like, dude, surround yourself with the right people, but that's right. You're still going to get that one negative Nancy around you. You're still going to get that person who just wants to poke you because they see that you might be on the upswing. You might be doing something better and they just still got to get that negative jab in there. But we have a choice in how we respond and that's how right. we can take that and fuel the fire to where we need to go. That's right. You know, I, I had, and again, I'm not name dropping again, Mr. Scott here, but um, a, a few years ago, I had the opportunity to have dinner with um, Condoleezza Rice. Oh my and, God, that must um, have been inspirational. You know, it, it actually was. Uh, I spent uh, probably five minutes with her. Um, she had to be alone for 12 minutes, um, believe it or not. But uh, I spent about five minutes with her. And, um, you know, she told me something that I will never forget. And that was, the, con the confidence you exude in a room, no matter who is in that room, you may not be the most important person in the room, but you better act like you're the most important person and don't ever let anybody treat you any less than that. And, and she said, putting on the confidence that you need to walk into a room is like putting on a jacket. You got to put it on. And when you walk into a room with people, you, you stare at them straight in the face and you shake their hand and you don't ever act as if you're less than the most important, in the room, uh, important person in the room. And uh, of course, I said, well, sure, that's easy for you, right? You, you're surrounded by like 12 security guards. It's easy for you to walk into a room and own it. Um, but, but the reality is, is that self-image, we all have some sort of self-image issue. And, oh, yeah. and we can sometimes allow that to let us, um, to hold us back. And we shouldn't. We should not let that hold us back. We should walk into a room because, you know, um, you are not loved by, by whoever your God is. You're not loved any less than the person next to you. You're not loved any less or any more. And out of every negative thing, at least in my life, out of everything negative, there has always been something positive that comes out of that. Even the stuff that's not fun and even the stuff that stings, out of everything negative, something always positive has come out of it. And if you go into to, to life, life situations knowing that, that not everything's fun and not everything's, you know, uh, roses and, and rainbows. But if you go into to every situation knowing that, gosh, you know what, maybe it's, it, maybe it has to happen so that something good can come out of it. I think we'll all be in a better place for that. And, and, and I can only tell you that because that's how it has worked in my life out of everything negative has always, always something has come up positive from that. Well, and just to tie into that, it, it's, it, as you're saying this, it's popped back in my mind, my old superintendent from fire, he was, Trust me, we had some bad days, man. I mean, some <laughs> I steep, bet. they call it hot shot country. It's steep as hell. You're, you're just beating the snot out of yourself. You just want the day to be over. And he always came over the radio and you'd hear him in your ear. And he's like, listen, guys, today's going to suck. I'm not going to lie to you. Yeah. But he's like, at the end of the day, you got to find a way to take the good out of it. That's right. Because this is going to happen the rest of the summer. 16 hour shifts. He's like, you're going to be physically beat up. You're going to be mentally beat up. He's like, you're not going to survive the season unless you every single day, when you lay your head down on that pillow underneath the stars, when we're camping, that's right. Like, you have a choice on how you're going to take the good out of the day. Mm -hmm. And I was like, dude, like I'm actually getting chills just talking about that right now. I was like, because <laughs> I haven't thought about it in a little while. And it's like, you're, you're just nailing it. And you and I are vibing on the flow state right now. I'm like, Damn, yes, yes. Totally. Because, because again, whether it's, whether it's the energy the room is getting, your friends, your family, it was just you looking in the mirror. Like it's, right. we have a choice. That's right. And you know, you know what? Uh, and I, I'm just going to go back to the food part because I'm, I'm a chef. I love food. Yeah. For me, Scott, that's my way of, of showing people love. And that's my way of showing people how that I care about them. And that's by feeding people. There's nothing more, you know, I guess speaking, you know, in a little different language here, but you know, romantically, you're, you, you, we're, we're all, or most of us are intimate with our, our, our significant others. 
food is a very intimate experience, not non-sexual intimate experience, mm-hmm. because there's nobody, you don't just go and, and share a meal with anybody. You don't just go and pull somebody off the street and sit down and have a meal with them. We, we normally do that with the people we love the most, right? We do that with our wives. We do that with our kids. We sit down at a table, we eat lunch, eat, eat dinner. Yeah. Um, and that's, that's your family's time to, to debrief, talk about your day. Um, and I remember as a kid, I never, ever, ever grew up with my parents eating separate or my brother eating separate. My, my family ate at the dinner table every single Same night. Here. Same here. And, and it's an intimate experience. And so for me, the food, my food journey has come full circle, full circle where, yes, I love food. And yes, I still, you know, yes, I still eat. And sometimes I eat things I'm not supposed to eat. But guess what? I still come back to the very next day I can start all over again. And, and if I screwed up today or if I screwed up yesterday, well, today I can make a better choice and, and burn off those calories. Or if I have to go run an extra mile because I, you know, I, I ate the wrong thing, well, then so be it. But, you know, food is a, it's, it's, it's a gateway to, to be able to spend some time with the people that you love and, and those that you might not love either. It, it's a great time to break bread with them. And, you know, it's, meals are just an intimate time for, for families and for other people. I, I, I firmly believe that. Well, and whether it's food or whether it's your daily mindset, your energy, right. I, again, we can go full circle once again, back to the earlier part in the show where we were talking about we're all just at a different place in the timeline. So I'd like to emphasize right. that and, and that'll, and then you, uh, you can help close us out for the day, but sure. It wasn't easy when you started. Not at all. It wasn't easy when I started. I tell people all the time, like before, before this, the line of we're just all at a different place on a timeline. Right. First two years of this show, cause I'm a fitness nut. I'm like, guys, you just got to keep putting the reps. All right. Uh, focusing on form and technique, just like you're in the gym. And then through the, consistency of frequency, it will get better. You will improve. Right. And that goes back to mindset. That goes back to how you're eating. Like you just hinted at like, Hey man, one day, you know, I, I, you want to call it again. It's not a cheat day, people. It's a cheat <laughs> meal. Okay. <That's> right. <laughs> not cheat a cheat meal. week, not a cheat month. You want to have a cheat meal. You want to call it that. I don't even like to call it that, but Hey, if you want to have a fun meal, whatever, have your fun meal. Don't make it a fun day, right. fun week, fun month. Cause then you are not bouncing back. But this is all knowledge that's gained over time. That's right. So, yeah, it's tied to what right. you're saying. Yeah, I, I guess the only other thing that I would tell you about that is, you know, and, and I, I was listening to some of your podcasts and, and Live the Fuel to me. I mean, I love it because that fuel piece to me, um, I used to look at a meal and just eat and enjoy it. Who the heck doesn't? We all do, right? Mm-hmm. But, sure. but now when I look at food, I look at it as fuel and I say, okay, if I'm putting gas in my car, I can't overfill it. So guess what? I'm going to eat what I need to eat, what my body needs to get from, from breakfast to lunch. And then I'm going to eat what it needs from lunch to dinner mm-hmm. um, because that's all I need. I don't need anything else. And, and we have to look at food as not this big meal that we're just going to, you know, scratch our belly on, but we really should be looking at food now to say, okay, how do I, what does my body need to, to function for the day? And that's what I'm going to take in and, and oh, not I- any more than that. And back to your point on your mental health and your mindset. Right. And thank you, by the way. I'm glad I'm, glad I'm getting through to people. <laughs> we all have a choice in how we feel our bodies, but right. also our brain, our mind, right? 80% of that right. brain tissue is, is fat tissue. Like if you are removing healthy fats from your lifestyle, you're literally starving your brain. You wonder why you're negative. You wonder why you're not recovering. You know why you have, you have, you have memory issues, all kinds of other side effects. It's a whole other show. Um, but yeah, we have a choice on how you're going to fuel that day, fuel the mind, fuel the body, right? How are you going to nourish right. it? How are you going to nourish it? That's, that's, even remove my word, nourishment. You know, that's, that's how I look at that. Am I nourishing myself right. so I can nourish other people? There that's you go. right. That's your word. I mean, we, I'm throwing nourish your way because we're talking <laughs> about food right now, but I generalize it as fuel, right? What is the, fuel. the conversation you're giving off, the mindset, the food, everything is food. Right. So, yeah, I'm glad we're vibing. This is very exciting. We are, we are totally vibing. I'm heading over to Pennsylvania very, very soon. I got to get back out to LA. There we go. <laughs> we're, we're, we're jumping time zones, people. So, exactly. Well, well, so listen, I, I've had a blast today. I'm excited. Ladies and gentlemen, again, ah, when, likewise. when food is your frenemy, yes. and we are going to keyword the crap out of that when we air this show so make, to help you with your SEO ranks. So let, let's close out our frenemy theme show here today. Uh, 
you've already dropped some powerful bombs. Is there anything like an all encompassing message or, or legacy message you want to leave behind? You want to close the show out with? Yeah. I mean, head over to my website at portionyourplate.com or jacobbustos.com. And, and really the book, um, you know, if anybody reaches out to me personally too, I take, I love to take YouTube, uh, messages or I take Instagram. I take, uh, I take all sorts of messages. Just, you know, anybody wants to message me, go for it. Um, you know, I, I, I even do some freebies every once in a while just because I think it's so important. But, um, if there's one thing that I can do, or if there's one thing that I can say that'll make somebody else's life any better, Scott, and, and if my book just inspires one person to, to get after it and lose some weight, uh, I will feel like I've done my job. And, and really the, the reality is, is that, you know, I was, and you can see my before and after picture there before I had 160 pounds and my after, but, um, yeah. I want to be able to impact just one person. And if I can impact just one person, the whole book was worth me writing. Um, and again, I never, ever had a plan or a, a dream to write a book. But I feel like this message is so important in, in, in the United States, especially because there are so many people who are suffering from morbid obesity. So um, my title, When Food is Your Frenemy, is, you know, it's awesome. And I, I highlight, it on, highlight it on there from obesity to restored health because that's exactly what it is. I'm, I'm a healthy, happy person now because I restored that. Well said, sir. Well, listen, Hank, I want to give you a proper goodbye off the air. Ladies and gentlemen, I couldn't have asked for a better way to close it out. I love the, the theme here. It's, it's inspiring me to help me finish my first book, which is literally in the final stages of editing. But again, if you could just get through to one person, they like stop trying to you know, cure the world. One person right. at a time. One person at a time. All right? So I'm going to use that to help me uh, fuel the fire on getting my book done because I got to get this thing out before the end of the year. So, <laughs> so again, ladies and gentlemen, check it out. When Food Is Your Frenemy. I think today we definitely helped fuel the fire on, on your healthy lifestyle choices, even your mindset choices. Uh, so rev think about that when you're talking to other people around you and giving off that energy as we discussed. Uh, make sure you go to not just, well, again, on Barnes & Noble, but you could just go to jacobbustos.com or portionyourplate.com. Read all about it. And also do one final screen share. Make sure you look at his partnership section because he, he name dropped a, a couple organizations. But I love this uh, Kid Liga uh, uh, site as well because they have the portion control plates for kids too. So obviously children live with diabetes, which he started the show off with. Uh, that's something important to create awareness around. So that's right. there we go, ladies and gentlemen. We're, we're fueling some fire for kiddos as well. So ladies and gentlemen, we're here to fuel your healthier business, your lifestyle. You too can live the fuel. And we'll talk to you guys again soon.